Okay, so this is the um, the pattern. Before I really get started, um, I think I have to say, warn you that there will be um, some possibly explicit shots that some of you may find disturbing. I have to admit, my nails need doing. So just don't look at that. Um, next time they'll be better. So, okay, so this is the pattern. Um, and this is the sizing system um, on the back. And um, you determine your size by taking your bottom cup depth measurement and you combine it with your rib cage measurement. So if you're not familiar with that, the bottom cup depth, okay, this is my lovely see-through lady. Um, it's in inches, by the way, because it's uh, for North America. Um, so the bottom cup depth is from the nipple down to the wire line. So you must be wearing a bra, the best fitting bra that you've got. Um, and you take the measurement from the nipple down to the wire line, following the swell of, of the breast. Okay, so this, her actual wire line her, is here, because clearly she's a lovely, perfect size, something or another. And, um, it doesn't, it's not like a real breast, but that's kind of the idea. If I show you on me, the easiest way I've found to do it is to sling the tape measure of my shoulder and start with the, the uh, end of the tape against your wire, which is down here, and just let the tape follow it through. And you can see that mine is, or at least I usually make, a 4.75 um, bottom cup depth. So don't pull it tight, because obviously that squishes you, and don't hold it loose, otherwise you'll be flattering yourself or whatever. Um, just let it go there and just let the tape measure over you, uh, go over your shoulder, okay? So, once you've got that measurement, that corresponds to these measurements down here. Oh, actually they do have it in centimeters, so there you go. Um, so that follows down there. Then Beverly says that that usually fits these kind of cup sizes. So this is not a like for like. This is just to give you a guide of, of where you might fall in this measurement. Okay, once you've got your bottom cup depth, you then take your rib cage measurement, which is literally straight under and pull it fairly tightly. Okay, I won't show you what the measurement is. <laughs> no, anyway, so pull it there. You don't add anything to it. You don't add four inches, take away the number you first thought of or anything like that. The measurement is what the measurement is. And then you combine the two things. So this is the pattern when you take it out of the envelope. Um, and it looks probably a lot different to any patterns that you normally take out. It's in sections, so it's easy to do. It's based on a foam cup uh, bra. So you've got the pattern for the foam cup pieces here. So you don't have to make any adjustments. Then you've also got the fabric cup pieces here. So you can see the difference straight away. This has got quarter of an inch seam allowance and this doesn't have any seam allowances. And then across the rest of the pattern are the band pieces. You've got front frames, and you've got back bands. And you'll see the numbers on here. These numbers correspond to the bottom cup depth. So if you measured three and a half inches as your bottom cup depth, then you find that on these pattern pieces. And you can see them written around here. So three and a half is here. So I would trace this pattern off following this line around there on all of these pieces. And then I would do the same for the fabric cup pieces. So three and a half inches is here. So follow that. So you can see Beverly has designed this so that it's much easier to see. You haven't got curvy lines crossing over each other and making it really difficult to try and follow. It's really straightforward by a quarter of an inch increments, the different cup depths on these pieces. So if we're making three and a half inches, trace off these cup pieces, use this frame. And then you need to find the back band piece, the power net piece, that matches three and a half inches, right? This is so that the side seams obviously match. You can see here on this pattern piece, three and a half inches is this line at the top. And then these numbers 
are your rib cage measurements. So if you measured 34 around the rib cage, then you would follow this line up here, up here, across the 3.5, down and across. So these are your rib cage measurements. And this is the bottom cup depth. So that's all there is to it, she said easily. Um, but it's just, I'm sure you'll agree, it's slightly different to what you may be used to when you unfold a pattern, especially one of Beverly's patterns. Um, but it's quite straightforward once you get those two ideas in your head. Bottom cup depth, which is these numbers, and rib cage measurement, which only applies to the back band. Okay, that's how you shorten it. If you are between numbers, if you measured 33 inches in the rib cage, then you'd obviously um, draw yourself a little line midway between those two and trace that off. So um, as you may or may not be familiar, the changing the rib cage measurement, the band size, is the easiest thing to do. And you always do it by adjusting the back band piece. So pick which one is closest to you, go with that one. It's important that you match these numbers up, the cup depth numbers, because otherwise your side seams won't match. Okay, so once you get, as the larger, the deeper the cup depth, you can see, um, sorry, these numbers are upside down, but this is a six inch bottom cup depth. And you can see how much bigger this side seam is compared to the three and a half inch. Obviously the larger uh, the cup volume, which is what this number represents the lump the larger the bottom cup depth the more support you need and therefore the more width you have at the band so then looking again at the front frame you'll see that this bottom line where the bottom band elastic goes is straight normally they curve like that but this is straight this has a number of advantages this helps to give the push-up effect in the cup because this is a straight line Everything has to be pushed up a bit more, which helps to give the lovely rounded shape that the ruby pattern has. It's also wonderful if you want to make um, your frame out of lace because you've already got a straight line here that you can run the scalloped edge of a lace against. Um, I think that's about, that's about it. Now you've got a lot more notches and do be careful. We'll talk about tracing out um, in a little while. Do make sure you mark these notches because the... Um, cup is in four pieces, three bottom cup pieces and a top cup, it's really important that you don't get any of these pieces, pieces swapped over, upside down, whatever. And when you've sewn the seams in the bottom cup, that's where those seams should correspond on your top cup. Now, point F is important to notice. Um, that's going to differ uh, on the size that you make. So if you make a six bottom cup depth, your point F is not here, it's over there. Okay, so this is a movable point, depending on the size of your cup. So don't kind of mark it there and then go and cut out this size because you'll be completely clueless as to where it's supposed to go. Okay, and similarly here, D is D, that's that seam line. B is B, that's that seam line and F comes around there. Okay, I think that's probably about it. Obviously, like with everything, make sure you get your dogs going in the right direction and you mark all of these things on your pattern pieces. Okay, so hopefully that's um, unraveled the mystery of this particular pattern and the way that it's laid out. I think it's, um, it's really nicely laid out, it's really easy to see. She's got on here, the back bands are your rib cage measurement, not your bra size. So please remember that. Take those two measurements and go buy what Beverly says. Don't go buy what you normally buy in a shop. This has nothing whatsoever to do with ready to wear sizing. Okay.